Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Friday live stream. So uh, before we begin, I just would like to ask all the thumbnail warriors to watch this entire video before you comment. And uh, we'll go from there. So first of all, uh, today's a great day. It's Friday, 18th of October, looking pretty good. I think Bitcoin almost, it may have hit 69K on different exchanges. I'm pretty sure about that. But uh, we're looking around 68, 69K. Very nice. 24 hours, almost 3%. Ethereum's up. BNB's up. I think everything's up, essentially. Shiba Inu's up 7%. Where's Solana? Solana's up 5% in 24 hours. And then, of course, over seven days, looking even better in a lot of different cases. So uh, the thumbnail on the title is exactly as it suggests. I took some profits today. And if you may notice, I have these rules below me. And I don't do these rules for my health. I don't do these to waste my breath. I do these because these are the things that I try to follow. And the reason why I do these things is that things just didn't work out too well in some historical ranges. So the rules are, don't invest more than you can afford to lose, it's all gone. Everything's a scam until it's otherwise. Don't leave things on exchanges because exchanges tend to go down and screw people. Also, don't lose, you don't use leverage and take profits along the way. Number five is the hardest one to do. And it is the hardest one to when I talk about it. Nobody has any problems with the first four. But as soon as I say, when I start talking about number five, of course, I'm a moron and the dumbest person on the planet. And that's fine. I'm okay. I am here for my goals. My goals are not your goals. So I sent out a tweet. Little, little post, and I said, I'm taking profits. <laughs> and for the most part, people get it. I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not saying that they don't. They understand. They're like, well, that's what you're supposed to do. Joe Nash here says, but sir, I started buying Matic at $2 and kept buying to 50 cents, and now it's 38 cents, I'm wrecked. And I said, me and you both, because <laughs> honestly, I've done the same thing, especially with, uh, with Polygon. I thought it would do really well. It just hasn't. And then uh, Aleph says, you can only take profits from Bitcoin. Altcoins are where they were when Bitcoin's at 40K. I said, false. It's all about time horizons. And there's a bunch of different comments. This, they're pretty funny. Like someone says, BlackRock, thank you, thanks you for your service. Again, the assumptions are there. The assumptions are I took profits on Bitcoin. And I said, BlackRock's buying bonk? That's kind of crazy. I didn't know that. That's pretty good. So why did I do this? Is it because that I am some master trader and I've taken a look at the MACD? I've taken a look at the RSI, or I've taken a look at some, some moving average or exponential averages. No, I have no idea. Uh, I'm, not a tr I'm not a scalper, a day trader. Uh, Liana asked me yesterday, what's a reasonable target price for SWE from today's 205? And I said, I don't know, 206? I'm not really sure. And then, of course, everybody comes out and piles on, piles on like Ben here, saying I'm a moon boy. Aaron Bennett saying I'm going to get people wrecked. It's <laughs> pretty funny. Des is a laugh one. DJ Crypto says Bold's Crypto Stash. Says you're a commenting genius. Rob Art gives a little, a little laugh here. And then also uh, Shartoshi says, I thought you were going to give me a range. And Endless Grind, of course, realizes what's up. So the question is why? Because, I mean, look, you can look all around. And there are no shortage of, of, of bullish videos. And I'm still very bullish on the market itself as time goes on. This is from Cointelegraph. Whales are accumulating Bitcoin at an unprecedented rate. And if we take a look at the Bitcoin ETF as well, we are at an all-time high as far as net flows. 341,000 Bitcoin as of yesterday. Who knows what's going to happen today? And even the Ethereum ETF flow hit a positive 48 million, which is, I mean, astronomical. I, I can't believe it actually did a, a pretty good uh, inflow, which I want to say, yes, it is uh, the largest inflow for the Ethereum ETF so far. That's great. And then, of course, macro, we're doing fantastic. Import price index is down. Initial job claims came in at like 20,000 under. You've got uh, uh, CPI numbers came out uh, previously, and we're looking okay. Uh, hit expectations are actually a little bit uh, below. And then also PPI came in uh, quite, uh, quite cool. So things are looking pretty good for the macro environment. So there's no reason to sell, right? There's no reason to sell. Well, look, first of all, I don't know what's gonna happen. Geopolitically, tomorrow, something can get nuked. World War III could start, nobody has any idea. And of course, there's a hack around every corner. And it seems like it's not about how much you make, it's how much you keep, ambient finance, website hacked. As I understand it, 
no funds were lost so far. We'll see what happens with that. So, you know, you just have some things in, in the background that you're thinking about. So how'd I do it? Why'd I do it? First thing, I want you to do this. This will make a lot more sense. Go to Coin Ledger. There's a link in the description. See right here, it says portfolio tracking. If you sign up for that, it's free. Actually, let me click on that. Learn more. And you just integrate your wallets and it, it tracks all your, your profits and losses. And what's also great is, you know, it's for your uh, uh, taxes at the end of the year. So here's the thing. This is an example. This, ob this obviously doesn't make any sense because you've got, they're, they're just, they're just numbers. This, I actually took them, this from their actual website. This is not my account. So what it's going to show you is like, hey, here's your cost basis. Because you understand this, right? If you buy a asset and you start it off and it's one of those, at, let's, let's say it's, it's one Bitcoin at 20,000. And then you buy another Bitcoin at 40,000, somewhere around there. What's your cost basis? Well, like 30,000, right? So what this does, it'll tell you like, look, It'll add up all your buys because it has an integration with your centralized exchange or wherever you're actually has also for your decentralized exchange as well. And I'll tell you, here's your unrealized return. Your unrealized return for this crypto is 3000. This crypto is a thousand. This is 650. These are unrealized returns. These are the gains that you have. On these other ones, you screwed up. Well, you didn't screw up. You just haven't waited long enough and you're down in the dumps. So now people will look at this and say, oh, well, Rob took Three thousand two hundred fourteen dollars and thirty-two cents for uh, for profits. No, that's not what I did. You can take profits at ten dollars, five dollars, five hundred, a thousand, two thousand, twenty-five hundred. It's what you need. But the thing is, I need to stress this. Like for me, again, my goals aren't your goals. This isn't financial advice. Not your dad. You do what you want to do. But when you sell these things, you if you put this in the cash, you have to understand that with cash sitting in the bank, it's just going to melt away. There's this thing called quantitative easing and money printing, right? We are diluting the value of the dollar. We're doing that since it was taken off the gold standard in 1970 by Richard Nixon. So as we do these things, if you put them in a dollar, it's not a really great idea. You could do it if you need dollars and you just love to, I don't know, roll around in cash. That's fine. But for me, when I look at this stuff, it's like I always want to take these profits, take some off the table, roll these into other assets and kind of go from there. And of course, the easiest way to do that is to see what's my cost basis and what's the unrealized returns. And if I can do that, I can be ahead of the game. Also, what's great about this is that I will tell you from going through two cycles, it is not easy to sell, especially as everything's going up and you're hearing constant, these, these constant rumors and these constant things like, uh, you know, we heard that, you know, this central bank's going to buy it or this president's going to come out and make this the world reserve currency or this is going to happen. Before you know it, you have so much positivity it's like you never sell. I just don't want that to happen to you. And I'm doing my best not let that happen. So again, why? Well, it comes down to this. For these different assets that I have, I personally have to pay for another asset. And that asset is an, is an apartment complex. I'm in real estate, as you may know. And this apartment complex is a pretty great deal. And uh, it's in a great location and it's going to be a positive cash flow, and we're gonna be using that for short-term and long-term rentals. So for that, there was a specific deal that we did with the original owner, and at this point in time, one of our other condos didn't sell, so I have to take funds out of the profits of my crypto and put that into the apartment complex. That's what it is. So when you do these things and people say, well, that's why would you ever do real estate? Because you can do so many other things with crypto, it's gonna be the most fantastic thing of all time, Michael Saylor and da-da-da, look, not a billionaire. Uh, I can't borrow against my stock of my publicly traded company and then borrow against that. I just can't do that. So for these types of things, I like to diversify a little bit. Again, you can tell, you can do whatever you want to do, have fun, have great at it. This is why I did it. So on top of that, I just want to remind people that, and people will say, well, that was a kind of a, this is not, not a great time to do those things. Like, look, it's the same thing I did last time. And you can look at my Twitter account, X account. And again, it's not like I timed it perfectly. I didn't, but it wasn't too bad. Things were getting overheated in March 31st. And I said, hey, take some profits or I'll dump on you. That was it. And people lost their minds. Uh, and then May 23rd, I said, I took profits a couple of days ago because I thought things were getting too overheated. And it was because 
first of all, I want to take some profits. Second of all, I had to pay for some other different assets. And it kind of worked out okay. And that's it. So historically speaking, I mean, what are we looking at here? 31st of March, Bitcoin was 71,000. Now, here's another thing. You'll never hit the top. And even if you do hit the top, let's say that Bitcoin goes to a, a value of $500,000. As soon as you sell it at 500,000, guess what people are going to tell you? You're an idiot. Bitcoin is going to $3 million. Okay. Do you need that money? Do you need it to do something? Do you want to put more assets? Do you need pay your bills? Do you need a new vehicle because you can't get to work because you have no car? Do you need a new kidney? I don't know, whatever it is. But I mean, speaking of which, I mean, Ethereum was 3,600 back at this time. BNB was 606. Solana was $202. XRP, watch out, 62 cents. Not too bad. Dogecoin was 22 cents. And this one, 19th of May, 2024, Bitcoin was roughly the same price, 66,000. Ethereum, 3,000, so on and so forth. But again, it's cost basis. And as you dollar cost average, you don't do just lump sums. I don't do lump sums. You can value cost average, but I don't dump everything because money is coming in. As money comes in, you buy other things. So what, I bought, what, I, what did I uh, sell off today? Well, a little doge. But remember, all of us here are not tourists. We have all been doing the thing we were supposed to do, which was buying in the bear market. And we have been accumulating, right? So with just 24 hours, Doge is up 15%. And I've been buying for quite some time. I mean, since 2022. So it wasn't a bad day to take some, take some things off the table. And again, how did I know what to do? Very simply, I just went to this, I just did a free portfolio tracker, checked out my unrealized returns. I said, oh, well, I've got this much. Maybe I should take some off the table so I can pay for this apartment complex. Great. Bonk. I sold some bonk, but remember, because people will say, I should have sold some back here, damn it. I didn't, sold some other stuff. But I've been accumulating this range over here and there was some pretty good profits, so I took some off the table. Solana, also great profits. Buying here at whatever it was, I took some off the table, not, I didn't hit the top, not at all. I'm not gonna try to say I did, but it was somewhere around here. And then, uh, you know, today you just, accumulate and take a little profits. And also there's one called Aether. Now I got an early on Aether and I had, uh, I think it's gonna be great. But again, you don't sell everything. You just take some off the table and then you're just playing with house money. So that's uh, essentially what I did. I hope that makes sense. I hope you guys can uh, understand. I don't say these, these rules just because they sound good or they sound conservative. I tried to walk the walk. And uh, this was not a, going to be, this probably will not be a popular video, but it is what it is. So that's what we have. So look, if you like today's video and you're not a thumbnail warrior and you figured it out, thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. Now, if you want to go over and do a little Q&A, answer all your questions, and there's tons of them, and we'll go from there. If you got to take off, take off. Thanks for stopping by on a Friday. Good for you.